songs to you, the Leon Long songs to you. Mm -hmm. uh, just three of them, though. Yeah. Uh, because I was, I was hoping to maybe sell them or shop them to somebody that you knew in Nashville, possibly. Mm -hmm. We had had a conversation about there's a lot of money in Nashville. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the next thing I know, you're telling me I need to get down here and record these things. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Uh, when I heard your voice portraying those songs and, you know, within that genre, to me, it just smelled right. You know, um, it, it definitely, you know, through the process of, of, you know, tearing into the songs and getting arrangements right and then writing the, the next couple um getting them done and especially once you know tracking really started and you know getting final vocals and all that just like every step of the way it just felt a little better mm. and a little better and then you know sitting back now and listening to it, it's just like why wasn't that the original thought in the first place yeah but, well, you know yeah i think you know what it comes down to uh is just when you open your mouth and you start singing there's a certain vibe that's there for me anyways you know as a as a fan um so, and, and, you know, it's not really far removed from your long-term uh, like influences and your, you know, your, your natural musical lineage. Mm -hmm. So, for me, it just, it just made perfect sense. So, on the Americana side of things, I got turned on to Nathaniel Rateliff and the Night Sweat about four or five years ago. Uh, listening on Spotify to something and they came through and I, they, I thought they sounded a lot like Dave Clark Five. And mm -hmm. I really dug that because that was the music that I grew up with was a lot of that, that older rock stuff. Um, and with Spotify, you know, they they suggest other artists that yeah. you may like. For fans of. Right, right. Yeah. And so Sturgill Simpson came next after mm -hmm. that. And um, I was like, well, you know, where's this stuff been? Uh, J.D. McPherson, uh, he's more like 50s rock. Yeah. But he came up next and I thought it was some song that I'd missed from my parents' childhood <laughs> right. because he sounded like that was where it was supposed to have been, you yeah. know? And, and then I was like, oh, there's this whole rockabilly scene too, which is a whole other thing. But, yeah. uh, you know, so then there was Alabama Shakes and then uh, just everything kind of, those those were the, the three or four that kind of got me back into that groove. And uh, the Sheepdogs have an old 70s kind of sound to them mm -hmm. and um yeah so those were the bands that kind of got me on that and then i went a little bit more into the americana stuff from there because yeah. i just liked that uh those sounds so americana country mix you know with some of the old 50s stuff yeah you know working on this project was kind of nostalgic for me too because uh it was not necessarily americana but uh so my my papa uh his name is Elmer Lowe. He passed away several years ago now. Uh, but he put out a gospel bluegrass record back uh, mid-late 90s, something like that. And I remember when I was little, um, I would sit on the front porch of his house over in eastern Kentucky. And he'd sit there. He had an old J45. And uh, he would just he'd play his songs that he wrote uh, for us. Sometimes he would do cover songs and stuff. It was, you know, me and my sister and... Uh, other cousins and so on and he would you know play that bluegrass Americana folk kind of stuff for me a lot when I was a kid and I never realized how much that like affected me honestly until I really started working on this project because it's the first time that I've had the the opportunity to dig that deep into Americana and, and bluegrass and that kind of world mm -hmm. so it was it, it was a fun project uh, for me because I get to just scratch a few itches that I didn't even know I had yeah. <laughs>